Ding Lear might be losing this chess game and I'm gonna show you why, all right? So let's get started. When we look at this game right here, and Ding Lear was the white pieces and his opponent, Jan Nepo, was the black pieces. Ding Lear's rating at the time was 2788 and Jan Nepo's rating is 2795. And this is the eighth game. Let's see what happened here. First of all, we got the move D4 knight to F6 and this has been played by Ding Lear every time that he hit the white pieces. Now, the only disappointing um, game was game two when Ding Lear was the white pieces and he lost to Jan Nepo the first time in the World Chess Championship match. And so after the move C4, they were going into this Nimzo uh, Indian defense line that was initiated after the move bishop to b4 after bishop b4 in this position we got the move e3 now e3 goes into the normal variation especially after castle king side and then we got the move a3 that is pretty much forcing black to either move their bishop back to either a5 well probably not a5 but <laughs> bishop e7 or take the take the knight on the c3 square Jan Nepo decided to take the knight on c3 after b takes on c3 and then we're going to continue on with the game knight to g3 and then we got this weird move rook to a2. There has been no master games with the with the move rook to a2 and not that I see of. There's probably people playing this with like leechess.org or chess.com but this is the first master game and Dean Lern must have had his own catalog in his chess theory because Jan Nepple was probably stumped at this position because he played the move b6 after this. After b6, e4, which is crazy because the king is still in the center and usually, you know, you develop the bishop, castle king side, play some normal chess. But you could tell that Ding Laren is in the fighting spirit. He's trying to pressure his opponent to make a mistake so that, hey, maybe he can get opportunities to get a win. After the move e4, bishop to a6, which is very usual um, in this opening for the bishop to go to a6, maybe knight to a5 in this position, attack the c4 pawn, and then white is going to pretty much be wondering, okay, how am I going to defend that pawn? But then we got this next move, which is bishop to g5, pinning that knight on f6 to the queen that is on d8, and then h6. Now, after h6, this crazy move happened that I don't know if Jan Nepple was ready for or not, but this crazy move that was played h4. Moving up Hector. What is happening next after moving up Hector? Because can't this pawn on h6 take on g5 very easily? Isn't that just some free money, some free value? Well, Jan Nepple took the bishop. After Jan Nepal took the bishop, h takes on g5, that is attacking a knight on f6. If this knight moves, what is the best move? Can y'all tell me? Can y'all tell me what the best move is? You can't tell me what the, what the best move is without actually looking at the board, but what is the best move? Once I go back. The best move is actually going to queen to h5, and this is force checkmate in three moves. That's why after h takes on g5, Jan Nepal decided to not move the knight but do the move g6 stopping to move queen to h the queen to h5 so after the move g6 g takes on f6 queen takes on f6 and then we got this crazy move e5 now if i was playing against dangler right now i'd be like are you crazy doing the move e5 at this moment your king is not castle and my queen is on f6 this should be good for me right what is going on here well Look how the game really transpired. Because after the move, D takes on E5, D5, Jan Nepo didn't do the correct move. He should have did Rook A to D8 just to get another piece into the game, but he did the move Knight to E7. After Knight to E7, D6, and then we got this move Knight to F5. After Knight to F5, a Knight to E4, Queen to D8, White's pieces are kind of getting coordinated, but you don't see like the coordination yet. But you see it after this really forcing move queen to d3 queen to d3 is pretty crazy because it is forming another pattern another checkmate pattern that i don't know if jan nepo was ready for so this checkmate pattern is queen to h3 pretty much forcing checkmate on h7 or h8 and now jan nepo is going to have to defend against that how would you defend against that if you was the black piece as well King g7 is a good defense because if queen h3 happens now, rook h8, and then they're going to have to be trading pieces. And black is going to have a better end game than white because of these double pawns that white has. And then the king is still in the center. This d6 pawn is going to be trash in the end game and etc. That's why Ding Laren did the move g4.
After g4 in this position, you can already tell that even though the computer is giving this flat zeros, this is a drawn position apparently, you don't, when you're looking at this position, don't don't go, don't base this position off of the computers, all right? Stockfish isn't gonna save you if you're sitting across the board against Magnus Carlsen in this position because anything can happen in the World Chess Championship. <laughs> in a World Chess Championship, I usually say in my streams, though, um, anything can happen in a World Wrestling Federation, but <laughs> I have to make sure I said the right saying. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back into the game. After the move G4, then we have this move of bishop to b7 after bishop to b7 and realize something if g takes on f5 e takes on f5 that bishop is pinning that knight on this long a8 to h1 diagonal and that's why that knight cannot move and that knight is going to be recaptured and another crazy part too is that bishop b7 was like the best move in the position if Jan Nepple would have played any other move, then that could have been an advantage for the white pieces, which, I mean, he blunders anyway, but you're going to see why uh, Ding Laren just messed up really badly. After the move rook to h3 and knight to h4, g5, we got this mess up, which is a bishop takes on e4. Now, after bishop takes on e4, well, let me just show you this. He should have did the move rook to h8, defending that knight, but after bishop takes on e4, queen takes on e4, knight goes back to f5. We got the best move here, rook to d2. Most people would probably think, okay, can't this queen just take on e5? Well, if this queen takes on e5, f6, and then you got g takes on f6, queen takes on f6, trade queens, and then it's gonna be a boring draw. Usually rook end games are drawn, so I don't know why anybody is surprised about that. There is a lot of pawns on the board and a lot of pawns in the center, and it, I don't think Jan Nepo is going to care about losing this weak pawn that's on e5 anyway. That's why rook to d2 was the best move that was played in the game by Ding Laren. Now, there's a lot of pieces that was traded, of course, and there's a lot of alerts that is happening here, and Jan Nepo knew all of them, and so that's why he did the move for the h8 to try to trade some pieces, even though that this is still technically a bad move. Now, after rook takes on h8, queen takes on h8, we got this next move, which was d7, not the best move that um, Ding Laren could have played here because he could have played the move rook to d3. I know it's a computer move, but I mean, this is the World Chess Championship that we're talking about here. This isn't any other tournament. These um, people th that are trying to be world champions, of course, of the world, okay, of the universe, they are the best in the world so i don't i expect them to play ai type of moves i don't care they should be playing like chat gpt okay i don't care if that's unrealistic to some people minds but i mean i've seen some wonderful games played by magnus carlson okara nakamura uh family on over the years even if you go back in the past bobby fisher all right and so hey i'll I'm, I'm not surprised that this should have been a suggestion i don't know if dean learn thought about this move but hey this was missed this was missed in the in the game and so after the move d7 still winning of course rook to d8 stopping that pawn queen takes on e5 we did some uh, repetition moves because they're trying to get to the 40 the 40 move mark to get that extra hour on time control if you don't know and then we got this move queen to c7 still technically winning and then Jan Nepple blundered again because, let me just show y'all something. Let me just show y'all. That was a, a free rook on d8. And I get it, right? If this rook would have been taken on d8, there's this move queen to e4. And to the human eye, there is no way to get out of that draw pattern because if bishop e2 happens, we got this move queen to h1, bishop goes back, queen to e4. Now you've probably seen that, but what if the king goes to d1? Then we got this move queen b1, uh, queen b1, king e2, queen e4, etc. Drawn position. The correct move to get out of that uh, drawn position is rook to e2. After rook to e2, queen b1, king d2, queen b2, king d3, and yes, Ding Laren would have had to seen all this to still be in a winning position. Queen b1, continue the continue the checking because if black um, quits checking the king, then white is definitely going to be winning, especially with this move queen to f6 and then um, pushing p, of course. After rook to c2, queen takes on f1, king goes back to d2, 
if queen just keeps on checking, eventually the king is going to be at a safe spot and now white is winning and the computer is actually saying that this is checkmate in seven moves. Crazy enough, right? And so Ding Lara would have had to find, uh, find this move, but he didn't. He didn't find this move for some reason. And he had 24 minutes on the clock, so he wasn't low on time. I don't know if he considered it or not. Um, I, I, I haven't seen any interviews yet, but hey, that's on me. I should have done my research if um, this was even considered in his mind. After the move king to d1 to try to get out of that like checkmate pattern that he like probably <laughs> um, had in his mind, he was delusional. He was seeing he was seeing threats that wasn't even there. Maybe it's because he's been whooped like every time that he had the black pieces from the previous games. Because remember, the seventh game he got beat, and um, if I'm not mistaken, I, th I think so. He lost the second game, he won the fourth game, and I think Jan Nepo won the fifth game too. And so he might have just been really distraught about everything that was happening in this position. I mean, in these games that was being played here. And so that's something to think about as you're like considering um, how Ding Liren has been playing here. Let's get back into the game. After the move king to d1, a queen takes on g5, king c2, queen goes back, and then bishop g2. After bishop g2, e5, another messed up move, not not the best move, bishop e4, the computer's giving them a Ding Liren a plus two advantage, bishop e4, knight to h6, and then we're just gonna continue on with the game. He blundered once more because he should have did the move bishop to c6 to try to defend that pawn. Now that queen can just go anywhere and just take all these pawns. And then maybe, you know, Ding Liren could have seen the promised land. You never know. <laughs> he could have won a game and then came back in the World Chess Championship and become champion. But he lost out on this opportunity. I don't know how this is going to affect all the rest of the games that is going to be played in the future. All right. So after the move, bishop to f3. Okay. He took that pawn. Uh, rook takes on f2, push that pawn up on e4, attacking that bishop on the f3 square, and then a ding landed the move rook to e2. After rook to e2, f5, take that pawn, take that pawn, and then queen d6, trade queens, take that pawn. All right, and this is how the game ended. Yes, it ended in a draw. Ding Learn missed two opportunities to win this uh, game. And so this is really bad. And hopefully Ding Learn isn't in the mindset that, oh man, I don't know how I'm going to beat this dude. Hopefully he didn't go home and just see, dang, I suck. I'm worthless. I can't do this. I can't become world champion. Hopefully he can come back into the next game, win with the black pieces, and then like keep on winning after that. That's like the only hope for the people who are Ding Liren fans. Now, the people who are Jan Nepo fans is probably like, oh, snap, we're doing good. We're Gucci. We're pushing P for real. And so let's just see what happens. But until next time.